So, uh, glaucoma suspects make up uh, half of uh, the glaucoma practice of a general uh, ophthalmology or a comprehensive eye center. And uh, that makes it about a third of the patients in the specialized glaucoma center. So, it's, I think it's, it's a huge number of these patients. And unfortunately, uh, there are many mistakes that are made also. So, a glaucoma suspect could be on the basis of the optic nerve or the disc and, uh, or IOP and sometimes on the history. If you look at the IOP factors first, I think often uh, the mistake made is that every pressure above 21 is considered glaucoma and often the treatment is started. Actually, that's over treatment in many. So 21 pressure, tonometry, tonometer. So I think uh, I will not be exaggerating if I say that a large cluster of our general ophthalmology colleagues in India are still depending on NCP and shiots. It's okay to do these two in, in, a, in an initial setting when you have a busy general ophthalmology practice. But once you suspect a glaucoma, then uh, just going ahead without doing aplanation is wrong practice. I can tell you with my confidence that if, if you were to do aplanation before setting in to do fields and OCT and stuff, which I'll talk about subsequently, I think four out of 10 of these suspects will not remain a suspect at all. They will, they, the pressure will be actually corrected by, by the application or the accurate measurement, and then it goes ahead. So, application is a must, is a message I must give in uh, to any walk in glaucoma suspect in your practice. And uh, we say this often in CMEs like this, but still people don't uh, adhere to that. So, application must, but if you have to do NCT, there is a way out. So, you must do uh, repeated readings, try to do three, four, five readings such that you should get three readings, which are in one to two millimeters of mercury in agreement to each other. Example will be, if you do NCT in a, in a patient of suspect for glaucoma, and you get readings like 17, 19, and 23, are the three NCT readings, you know this is, this is a wide range. So you keep on measuring the NCT again, or four, five, six readings, such that you get pressure say 19, 20, 20. So these are within the one to two millimeters of uh, measurement and that takes away the error which comes due to the, the ocular pulse or the systolic or the diastolic effect that NCT will have. That is one way forward. Now with the shiots also, I mean, in the rural setting, I think we must talk about this. Uh, these are studies, old studies which were done in RP center which showed that if you have to use shiots, you should repeat the measurement with the 7.5 weight. So you get the IOP with the 5.5 which is there and you repeat it with a 7.5 weight. And if you take the average of these two readings, it's to some extent, it nullifies the effect of the spread rigidity on the errors associated with it. But again, application is a must, is, is the key point of that slide. Again, just to do one uh, time reading, that means a patient comes to you at 10 o'clock today and you measure and then you start treatment or your base your judgment on that is not correct. So in a suspect situation, you have to do uh, a repeated uh, office time or clinic time measurements. Those in medical colleges or where admission is possible, you can do a dianal. When dianal is a must in a suspect is the question often asked and the, these first two are the main ones. In an, it's especially more important in normal tension glaucoma suspects where the pressure has never been higher, say not, not even beyond 18. So if you do dianal over the 24 hours in admission setting, then you can pick up a spike and then that patient actually becomes, you know, what is beyond the target pressure. Also, it sometimes if there is, you've decided not to treat, there is unexplained progression. Then also you see for a missing spike that is otherwise missed with one time reading. Now that, uh, like I said, admission is not possible with a large uh, cluster of our general ophthalmology colleagues. So what we ask them to do is office dianal means you ask the patient to come at say 10 o'clock today in your clinic. The next day, the patient can come say at four o'clock in the evening if, if that suits and then maybe in the noon time and on another day. So you try to finish the, what is known as dianal over a next four to five days rather than over a single day. So that does not compromise the work of the patient. And at least it's much better than doing a single reading. So office dianal is a must again in these settings. Now on the history also, like I said, sometimes suspects could be on a, you could diagnose suspect on glaucoma history. So the top five history taking points, again, this is not a comprehensive list, 
but the idea is to just you know emphasize the important ones a patient with family history of glaucoma you try to screen their you know their near and dear ones with patient with ocular symptoms especially pain headache blurred vision and halos and three to four such episodes a month you have to rule out angle closure glaucoma spectrum past ocular problems especially myopia and hypermetropia please ask for lasik a patient may have had lasik doesn't use glasses but may be a myope earlier so ask for these things sometimes they are not very obvious from the patient uveitis per se can you know cause a secondary glaucoma then becomes a secondary glaucoma not a suspect situation and also steroid use for uveitis is there and, and you should think of these especially if it's a unilateral uh, suspect uh, retinal vein occlusion is important because whatever the pressure is you try to lower it a little lower than what the pressure is especially in the presence of retinal vein occlusions use of steroids and they could be as trivial as you know using a facial cream of steroids and those are things might have to be elicited past ocular trauma again it could be trivial and the patient may forget so you ask that leading question and especially in a unilateral suspect and uh, things like asthma and all are important uh, diabetes hypertension because they may be contributory to the process of glaucoma but also you have to keep in mind if you need to start treatment you need to decide the correct treatment based on these systemic factors a large cluster of our uh, patients are uh, labeled uh, suspect for glaucoma on the disc so this is important to know and the mistake that we often make is that in a busy practice we use an ophthalmoscope only which is fine but again like i told you for apprenation once you suspect glaucoma you have to use one of these lenses why because features like shown in this picture are very difficult to comment on with the ophthalmoscope and they are very nicely seen with the biomicroscopy that this these lenses afford also the mistake made is we label just the cup to disc ratio we just write that in our notes in fact that is the third thing to note so look at the top four things first thing to look at is the disc size look at the size of the disc as shown here then you next look at the rim the contour and especially the vertical contour of the rim is so critical in glaucoma and the color and once you have the disc and the rim then the third thing you decipher based on these two is the cup look for the vertical cup also mention the horizontal cup but vertical one is more important i really emphasize that now we are labeling uh, we are you know laying a lot of stress on what is this parapapillary atrophy of the beta zone and the common site for these this is the inferior part of the disc or the inferior part of the nerve also you can see this rnfl defect is nicely seen it's it's again the commonest site is inferior so by message from the slide to the audience is if you are looking at glaucoma or suspecting glaucoma in the nerve please do a careful examination of the inferior part of the nerve where a lot of findings are there and inferior followed by superior so vertical dimension think of glaucoma if it's only horizontal it could still be glaucoma but keep the differential lower down then based on the angle i think this is the, the thing half of adult glaucomas in india or primary adult glaucomas in india are angle closure there is no there is no controversy in this whether it's in uh, delhi whether it's in uh, hubli whether it's in gujarat or in uh, chandigarh or chennai this is a fact which is proven and this is unfortunate because this is a survey i did 3 to 4 years back where 40% of the angles or the angles which were closed were missed by general ophthalmologists and this is a staggeringly high number 10 out 4 out of 10 is missed out they start treatment thinking it is open angle glaucoma don't do the laser don't open this angle and if you don't open this angle with a laser then the the pressure spikes are occurring 24 hours or sometime in the 24 hours and they keep bombarding the optic nerve the damage keeps on happening so please remember that gonioscopy in a busy practice do one herix if you suspect a shallow ac on that on one herix gonioscopy is a must this is the single most important challenge that we face as glaucoma you know someone who does only glaucoma this is what we are seeing every day in our practice our general ophthalmology colleagues are missing this and contributing to glaucoma blindness 
perimetry the, again the the question of an asking in cme is like today is which test to order please remember the commonest tests done the world over is the 24-2 ceta standard of the humphreys and there are equivalent tests of the octopus which can be done uh, with that the gold standard again the question is you want to do a field first or a no city first in a suspect my answer always to that question is it has to be the gold standard is field it has to be done first because if you don't do a field how will you know if the field is defective or not you do the first time field there are changes then the patient doesn't remain a suspect for glaucoma then they, then he becomes a glaucoma actual glaucoma patient needs treatment so first test to order in a glaucoma suspect is the field test yes certainly oct is a very good test in a suspect situation remember that beyond moderate to advanced glaucoma there is hardly any role of oct but in a suspect because you can pick up pre perimetric glaucoma with oct so it should be the next test to do after the field and it should be done at the baseline often this is another mistake which our colleagues make that there is a defect like this one you can see in the right eye of this uh, patient there's a sector defect on the first oct done and the question asked is when the field is normal and the first oct is showing the sector defect does that qualify to start treatment my answer in a general format for this question is answer is no treatment for the first defect when everything else of the field is normal so the question asked is then why are you doing such an expensive test when that is showing a defect and then then despite that you don't want to start treatment so my answer to that is that unless you do it at the baseline and you repeat the test after say 6 months how will you know whether the patient is progressing or not so the mantra to uh, judge an oct for glaucoma is progression especially if it is done by the same machine and the same operator and if there is progression of oct defects despite the field still being normal at that time that is an indication for starting treatment however we do not dismiss the first oct if there is a defect we lower the target pressure by 1 to 2 points but often that does not mean you have to start treatment so oct must be done but often you don't have to start treatment on that at that time it is required if there is progression corneal thickness again this is one of the situations where especially normal tension glaucoma or ocular hypertension you must do a corneal thickness this is this is uh, again in in established glaucoma you may or may not do it but here it is a must the differentials man this is the second last slide i have so the differentials top 5 the important ones especially in the elderly remember glaucoma is a disease of the geriatric age group must rule out ischemic optic neuropathy especially in diabetics and hypertensives low blood pressure hypotension can also cause ischemic insult cns lesions like shown in this uh, scan can mimic a uh, glaucoma or masquerade as glaucoma but actually will will be a different etiology altogether in a young male obese patient who snores a lot sleep apnea this is not uncommon in practice we see this probably once in two months or even more than that in our practice so but we ask for it we are you know we patient often doesn't come out with best thing is to ask the spouse and disc anomalies again may masquerade as glaucoma these are the top 5 differentials not an exhaustive list but something which are seen day to day in our practice keep these lists in mind i'm not i'm going to slip this slide because there are many talks on uh, target pressure and iop following me so the last slide i have is follow up often when a patient walks in your opd as a suspect like i've shown, uh, told you earlier you don't have to start treatment at that time always in every patient but you have to counsel the patient for follow up that's very important and the we say 6 months to an annual follow up we alternate between perimetry and oct like at 6 months we do oct at the next we do field and then keep alternating till one of them is showing a defect 
And if, if one of them shows a defect, then we have to do both at that instant. And there is no substitute for a good clinical exam. I reiterate the three things, if you can do this in a suspect, you have done your job is applination, a 90 day examination and gonioscopy. If these three things are there, even if you are in a rural setting and you do not have immediate access to a field or an OCT, these three things, if you can do with a lot of confidence, I say you can manage or correctly manage your suspect and help us in preventing glaucoma blindness. I would like to thank Dr. Namrita and Rajesh and AIOS for the opportunity and always a pleasure to interact with the audience. If you can stop the show, please.